Henry Winkler opens up about drama on Happy Days. The long-awaited tell-all from the set of Happy Days finally reveals what went on behind the scenes. For almost a decade, the Happy Days cast produced television magic. However, off-screen, there were some secrets the public wasn't supposed to know about. After reading these unbelievable show secrets, you'll view the next Happy Days rerun completely differently. A different name. Did you know that Happy Days was almost called Cool? While it may describe Fonzie, it doesn't give the right feel for the show. Another title was considered. Fonzie at the lead. After the showrunners saw how popular Fonzie became, they wanted to ride his wave of success. At one point, they even considered changing the show's name to Fonzie's Happy Days. The rest of the cast was probably glad they decided against it. A different era. Even though you're fully aware that Happy Days is set in the 1950s due to objects such as jukeboxes, motorcycles, and leather jackets, it feels as if the characters almost exist in an alternative decade. The initial plan was to set the scene in either the 1920s or 30s, but creator Gary Marshall decided on the era that he was raised instead. The actual location of the Cunningham House The Cunningham House from Happy Days was located in California, not Wisconsin. So how did the show end up taking place in Milwaukee? There's a pretty simple explanation for that. Badger State Tom Miller, the producer, actually pitched the idea of setting the show in his hometown, Milwaukee. He believed that a Midwestern city would assist more people from America to relate to the show better. It's safe to say that his idea was successful. Country Life The original pilot episode was slightly different from what we now know as Happy Days. The biggest change of them all? Howard Gould played Mr. Cunningham but couldn't commit to the series long term, so Tom Bosley took over the character instead. ABC was not on board. After watching the pilot episode, ABC chose not to pick up the series. However, American Graffiti's success inspired the network to try Happy Days. Interestingly, there's another connection between the show and George Lucas's film. The Things That Inspired George Lucas Contrary to popular belief, the TV series Happy Days didn't draw inspiration from George Lucas's film American Graffiti. Instead, after seeing Ron Howard's performance in the pilot episode of Happy Days, Lucas decided to cast him as Steve Bolander in his film. However, if it weren't for serendipitous circumstances, Howard may never have been on Happy Days. The Audition Robbie Benson was the original choice for Richie, but he didn't want to play the role. Gary Marshall, the series creator, thought someone else would be better suited, so they worked together for Benson to bomb his audition. Ron Howard Reasons Meanwhile, Howard wanted to be a director but took the role for one primary reason. If he accepted employment, he could dodge being drafted for the Vietnam War. Unfortunately, although happy with the position, other cast members weren't as courteous to work with. Pinky doesn't have any affection for Fonzie. Do you remember Pinky Tuscadero? She was Fonzie's love interest. However, in reality, actress Roz Kelly didn't get along with most of the cast, including Henry Winkler himself. So she was quickly written out of the series, similar to what happened with another character. Chuck did not last. Richie and Joni had an older brother named Chuck in the first two seasons, but he slowly disappeared over time. Why? Actors don't last forever and budgets get cut. The best older brother around. First and foremost, audiences didn't care for Chuck. Also, Fonzie had taken on the older brother role in the show, so in terms of popularity, no one could beat the Fonz, although at some point he may have been a very different character. Fonzie without his leather jacket. Do you remember Fonzie from the hit show Happy Days? He was always sporting a leather jacket. But did you know that originally ABC didn't want him to wear one on the show? They thought it gave off gang connotations. The Alternative The Fonz's leather jacket is one of the most iconic television fashion choices in history. But it almost wasn't that way. 
If the network had gotten its wish, the Fonz would have been dressed in a pale windbreaker instead. Thankfully, Marshall convinced ABC that wearing a leather jacket was simply a safe way to ride a motorcycle, and TV history was made. Down to Earth In complete contrast to his character on the show, Henry Winkler was very poor at riding motorcycles and still cannot ride one to this day. During a 2013 appearance on Strombolopolis, the actor said he even crashed a bike on set after traveling only five feet. Tom Hanks and the Fonz In 1982, a then 26-year-old Tom Hanks played a karate-obsessed former rival of the Fonz. Funnily enough, Hanks' future wife, Rita Wilson, would also appear on the show that same year. Grease Winkler's portrayal of Fonzie was so iconic, thanks to the leather jacket he wore, that he got asked to play Danny Zuko in Grease. He said no, though, for a primary reason, his lack of singing skills. Dyslexia Problems Winkler has dyslexia, which makes it difficult for him to read through scripts and memorize his lines. However, he found a way to make light of the situation and use humor as an advantage. This allowed Fonzie to feel like a relatable character rather than just another act. The Fonz is the essence of cool. Mind you, Winkler almost failed his audition because of his condition. He revealed to the Mirror in 2013 that he couldn't read lines. Instead, he ad-libbed and told the casting agents that he was giving them the essence of the character. Amazingly, that ploy turned out to be a success. Surprising Singer Do you remember the jukebox Fonzie banged on at Arnold's? It mostly played covers of Anson Williams. He was Potsy, the show's nerdy but talented musician, and he could actually sing well in real life. The Secret Did you know that Pat Morita was born in California and spoke perfect English? However, he decided to create an accent for his role as Arnold. He would use the same voice later on for the memorable character Mr. Miyagi in The Karate Kid. Fun, Vibrant Fonz The Fonzie character from Happy Days not only inspired spin-offs but also had a brief animated series. In the Fonz and the Happy Days gang, he was the star before making a cameo in Laverne and Shirley's own animation. More intelligent than his or her character Off-camera, Winkler made a smart business move that not many people know about. He decided to take a small salary in place of getting a percentage of the show's profits from merchandising and syndication. Luckily for him, Happy Days was successful and his risk paid off handsomely. Hi there, this is Fonzie. Winkler receiving more fan mail than most was not out of the ordinary. He actually took time to answer his followers' letters and even called some fans on the phone. I would spend 20 minutes going, no, no, it's really me, he told Oprah in 2015. Cancellation Threat Most people know Happy Days as one of the most popular American sitcoms, but few realize that it was close to being canceled. The show received poor ratings during its second season, and if it weren't for Gary Marshall changing the humor and tone, we might have never seen this comedy classic. Special Bond The Fonz was always Mrs. Cunningham's favorite. She even got to call him by his first name. In real life, Winkler and Marion Ross also stayed close friends, which just goes to show that the Fonz is a pretty cool guy. Though Henry Winkler was excelling on set, his life wasn't as great as it appeared to be. In reality, he struggled at home before becoming famous. His mother and father escaped from Germany to America just before World War II started. Their wartime experiences left them with visible scars and made them quite verbally abusive towards young Henry. Can you imagine your parents calling you a dumb dog? Unfortunately, Henry wasn't doing well in school either. It would be amazing if all teachers were naturally understanding and empathetic like Miss Honey, but that's not the case. Sometimes you get a few Dolores Umbridges mixed in. When Henry didn't do well on his tests or homework, his parents would give him strict punishments at home. To make matters worse, Henry had undiagnosed dyslexia. However, since the condition wasn't well known in the 50s, his teachers didn't understand or try to help him overcome it. Instead, they made him feel like he was a dumb dog. Henry, despite his dyslexia, didn't give up and kept fighting. He graduated on time, 
almost by the end of high school and was even accepted into Emerson College but he didn't stop there he continued to fight for what he wanted Henry always knew he wanted to be an actor and after graduating from Emerson he applied to the Yale School of Drama he went into his audition for getting his lines but improvised so well that he ended up getting accepted anyway however after graduation he realized that the real world was going to be much different his job required him to read scripts so if he struggled with reading comprehension it would be a problem still he never saw this as an obstacle instead he considered it a challenge Henry said that he had never read anything the same way more than once in his life he could memorize vast passages quickly and for the parts he didn't know he'd make something up on the spot with conviction oftentimes making those around him laugh this fearless attitude led to many job opportunities just as he had planned Henry landed a role on one of the most popular sitcoms at age 27 he starred as Arthur the Fonz Fonzarelli who was effortlessly cool in comparison to the show's other characters he wasn't originally supposed to be the main character but after the audience fell in love with him the producers had no choice but to keep him he quickly became a fan favorite because of his talent and ability to connect with people his catchphrase endeared to everyone's dismay however things didn't work out as planned for his beloved character Henry's success after 11 record-breaking seasons in Hollywood made him one of the biggest stars however that same success was also his downfall after years of being cast as nothing but Fonzie Henry knew he had to do something drastic if he ever wanted to change the public's perception and be seen for his talent instead of his good looks Henry had to make a hard decision when he ran out of options stop acting to focus on being a producer and director it was a good thing he did because it turned out that he was great at it one of his first projects as a producer was the hit TV show MacGyver he had other plans too away from the cameras Henry concentrated on other areas of his life like his family in 1978 Henry wed Stacy Weitzman and became a father figure for her son from an earlier marriage Jed yet it was his stepson that made Henry understand something that would change his existence forever see Henry realized he was quickly falling into the same patterns as his parents Jed was struggling in school and Henry would just encourage him to work harder and put in more effort what he didn't know was that their situation was more alike than he thought they both felt like giving up at times Henry and Stacy took Jed to the doctor for testing where they discovered he had dyslexia this revelation was not only earth-shattering for Jed but also for his parents I went oh my goodness I have something with a name recalled Henry upon his discovery that's when it all finally clicked for me after a 30-year hiatus Henry decided to return to television in 2018 with a lead role in HBO's Barry when the show first aired no one was sure if it would be successful comedy about a hit man who becomes an actor it sounded insane after Barry raked in award after award it became clear to fans that Henry's return to the small screen had been anxiously awaited for years one of the biggest awards Barry took home was outstanding supporting actor for Henry's performance his first primetime Emmy win in 40 years Henry was proud to come out on top in the end I am who I am he said I'm pretty content with myself and how I achieve success despite my learning challenges he was very excited to work with an old friend again after Henry retired he crossed paths with Ron Howard from Happy Days while working on the short-lived sitcom Arrested Development the two no doubt had a lot of catching up to do after decades apart